suspect John Gacy. So the John Gacy mass murder trial. John Gacy. And as Plains, Illinois, near Chicago, police today found six more bodies under the John Gacy house. And all of this is like a nightmare. 27 bodies buried under his house and garage. Of the murder of 33 young men and boys. Carried most of the bodies under his house and got rid of the others elsewhere. That was one of the first questions was, why am I alive? Chicago could have imagined the events that occurred at this property in the 1970s. By day, John Wayne Gacy was a respected neighbor, successful businessman, a professional clown, and a huge community partner. By night, he was a murderer, preying on the victims around Chicago. How did Gacy get away with hiding 33 bodies in the crawl space of his house for years? How did police ultimately discover his evil secret? I talked to various people associated with the case about their perspective and why it is still an open wound 40 years later. I did work directly for John Wayne Gacy. Mike Nelson was just 13 at the time John Wayne Gacy approached him and asked him to mow the lawn at the apartment complex Gacy was a maintenance man at, located at 6114 West Miami. Since Mike lived across the street, he took up his offer and worked for John directly until he was 17. The whole time Mike was working for him, he had no idea the gruesome crimes that Gacy was committing and didn't end up finding out until he was 35 years old. Although Mike did not understand what was going on at the time, looking back on it 40 years later, he recalls strange details that he didn't exactly have answers to, including holes being dug around the property and getting filled up at night, as well as a remodeled parking lot that was dug way deeper than it should have. They took out a gravel parking lot to put in a blacktop parking lot. You wouldn't dig down six to eight feet to put in a blacktop because you want the compressed soil and such it's underneath it for the stabilization of the of the blacktop. All of the basement windows that I used to work on were blacked out one day and a maintenance man would have no reason to black out windows. There was also concrete that was poured in the basement overnight again and uh, I don't know how deep the concrete is but there was concrete that was poured down there and there was no reason for concrete to be poured down there to the best of my knowledge. There were trenches that were dug in the front property. You know, all those things lead to the fact that there's too much suspicion and there's got to be something there. Mike shares with me his feelings when he first found out who John actually was, almost 15 years after he had worked for him. So one of the first questions was, why am I alive? And uh, uh, the scariest uh, moment was I looked back years ago at a photo of myself from when I was like 16 years old and I had the long flowing hair that kind of came over and it was the, the thing, you know. And <clears throat> I had a very young face and uh, when you held it up to all the other people who were missing and or were killed, it fell right in line with why wasn't I one of them, you know. It was a very scary feeling. John Borowski is a Chicago-based documentary filmmaker who is currently working on a John Wayne Gacy documentary. John knows the ins and outs of this case, and he shares with me different perspectives and what is the most important to understand while looking at this case. The biggest part of the Gacy case is him being gay. Yeah. The biggest piece. You know, it all comes back to that. And not only that, but the times he grew up in and the times he lived in. 50s and the 70s, you had, you know, being gay, number one, was against the law. If you were gay, you could be arrested. So he had to hide that. His repression of that, of that desire, caused him to cover up who he really was. And think about it, what did he do with the boys that he killed? He covered them up too. No one knows. I would tell him that I understand how difficult it was growing up gay, being gay in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. I understand that. And I just wish that he would have found another outlet, you know, or accepted that and embraced that about himself. But I think he was just leaving. I live in a whole different set of lives, and he was brought up rough, and rules didn't matter as time went on, you know. So, what drives a person to that? Who knows, you know?